Set context, both brands have been around in the region for over a decade. Source market-wise, Expedia focused on outbound initially, inbound, mm -hmm. TripAdvisor focused on outbound. How have th things have changed considerably since then? Could you just walk a bit about what's different over the last decade and a half? Decade and a half, that goes back, that's a long time yeah. in, in, the, in the world of travel. Um, I started my career in, in GDS, so that's kind of like the dinosaur technology, and here I am with TripAdvisor. So it's, um, in the time I've been with TripAdvisor, if I can kind of just condense it to there, you know, we've, we've gone from the world of eight different windows popping up in Meta to now moving into what we call Meta 2.0, and it's, it's very, very fast-paced. In the region, we've got a presence uh, with offices across Tokyo, Sydney, Delhi, uh, Singapore, China, Hong Kong. And we feel that as much as you, you, you were calling it uh, an outbound, that we still see there's you know, obviously very important domestic markets. China, Japan, India, and Australia predominantly. And we have, we have great focus there, and we have great partners. Andy? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, a big milestone, I think, just hearing uh, Ashish talk about Go Vivo and uh, their, their journey the last four or five years. Expedia this year is celebrating 20 years, so it's been a, a long journey for us. We've been in the market, as you say, sort of 10, 12 years. Uh, it, 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 it started with penetration on supply and building supply for our sort of more North American and, and European customers, and uh, it's been quite a significant journey since then. Now our footprint, uh, very similar to, to Grant, we've got our agencia corporate business that's just opened up in Singapore. We've added uh, What If to the family. Uh, Expedia, I run the uh, AirAsia Expedia joint venture, so we, we run both the Expedia and AirAsia Go brands across the whole region. Hotels.com, our affiliate networks. So I think over, certainly over the last five to seven years, you've really seen uh, Expedia sort of lay down that footprint, and it really marries with the, uh, you know, just the growth rates we're seeing in the region. So surely uh, investments rise in the region from both brands, but we still haven't seen both brands like going all out, taking on the local players, uh, except for a few markets, maybe Australia. But it still remains very local heavy, uh, regardless of wherever you look across the region. Talking in terms of brand marketing, just yeah, brand, brand marketing, visibility. Yeah. Uh, we obviously re rely a lot on our users coming to the site. So the, the, the tagline of the, the wisdom of friends and actually user generated content. And we're predominantly known as reviews and transitioning into planning and booking on the site. So we, we haven't done a lot of overt marketing. We rely on our, on our user base. We did dabble with, with it in Australia, but we decided that wasn't for us at the time uh, and continue to also work very closely in our partnerships. So how do we actually work with our partners to grow our brands? And, and similarly for, for us, I think you're, you know, we, we talk about the marketplace and just how big that opportunity is. And I, I don't think anyone, any single brand in any market is, uh, you know, fully cracked it on a, on a full scale in domestic and outbound. Which, uh, which has been the toughest market to crack for both of you? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think, uh, you know, I think every market has its nuances. I mean, as we talked uh, earlier, as Douglas talked about just Asia, and you can't talk about it as being obviously a, sing, you know, a single Asia pack market. Um, the problems we have, you know, challenges in every, every market. Markets we've been in, like Japan, for close to nearly 10 years, 10 years this year, uh, and, and re really made a, a really strong foothold there. Um, just the, the speed at which the market is, is innovating with new players coming online, um, you, you've just got to be ready for change, and there's always a disrupt around the corner. So I, I wouldn't say we ever rest on our laurels on a single market and say we've, 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 we've beaten it or made it. I mean, for us, Asia Pacific makes up 20, in excess of 20% of our business. So, and, and to, to Jonty's point, every market is important. It fires at a different time, it matures at a different time. Sometimes you've got to be ready to pivot. We did that in China and took a very different focus last year and uh, focused on outbound, purely on outbound. Did a rebrand uh, into, uh, called Mao Tu Ying. Um, so you've got to adapt with the market. And then, you know, uh, Shish was saying before, he's going to dabble in activity. So it could be great for them, may not be so great. So, you know, you've got to try these things. And I think a lot of it comes down to data. Try it, test it, does it work, do, they, do you get the right signals? If not, you iterate, you move on. You spoke about China and both the brands offloaded their existing mm -hmm. brands in the market. Uh, what's the strategy going forward? How confident are you in going solo in those markets? Um, when we talk about solo, we, we kind of, we were there anyway and, and offloaded a brand yeah. versus actually having a, a joint venture, which yeah, is yeah. different to what John T had. Um, we're very confident in the outbound market and we've, we've successfully repositioned um, the site for that and also taken some of that Mao Tuyung branding across into Taiwan and recently we launched Hong Kong. 
So I think you know we, we had a, a quite an experience with um, the Elong family, and even myself, I spent some time working at Elong back in 2007. Um, I think our position now is it was a, a, a great transaction for us financially um, coming out of Elong, which would have been the headline, but actually we still position ourselves uh, and have quite a strong distribution uh, plans with both Elong and Ctrip. So as we all talk about the, the China outbound business, and we continue, uh, like many counterparts who will be on the stage, to test and learn is, our, is, is the back of, of everything that we do. And so we just launched our, our brand Expedia site uh, in November in the market, um, and we will continue just to learn about the customer and optimize that, that product over time. Uh, let's talk about a bit about Australia. I know it's out of your purview, John, a bit, but uh, that seems to be the only market where global travel brands have really cornered it uh, with the acquisition. Media. What if mm -hmm. uh, Booking.com is growing there significantly as well, and Trip is one of the leading sites. Uh, what's so different about that market that it worked for the global brands there? Great question. Uh, I feel that's, um, they've had exposure perhaps to a lot of international brands anyway. Um, you know, our site's driven by user-generated user content and, and people have connected with the site. What If was, was really a pioneer in its times. We were talking before, Ashish had that slide up about some of the startups of five, ten years ago. What If was there, there was also a company called Flareview Travel and, and Australians always had a great propensity to travel. So I think if you were a startup, uh, in that market, travel was always, there, there's an appetite from the audience and it was very sticky, I think, for the audience and, and people were confident to try new things. And I, and I think um, connecting to, to travel was easy for people uh, and they had the, the, the oomph to travel as well. And I think for us, there's just, there's a natural match, I think, when you look at the marketplaces to the successes we've built out in, in North America and, and, and in Europe, which made uh, things significantly easier for us. Um, and obviously by bringing what if into into the family um, last year we were able to sort of really match uh, our strengths as the Expedia brand and the position we built as a sort of longer booking further overseas to really pick capturing the domestic market as well which has really helped. And of course with the home away acquisition you also get travel mm -hmm. more, stays, book back, a couple of more. That's right. Right. Uh, looking back, started as sister brands evolved into partners, now somewhere down the line looking, being competitors with instant booking. Uh, you've started rolling out instant booking across the <coughs> world with booking. Uh, what's the roadmap for that in Asia? We're, we're, we're live across all markets. We're live globally in 47 of our 48 markets. I believe the, the last one goes live in the next couple of weeks. Um, partnering with, with our friends at Priceline enabled us to go at scale towards late last year, so we had plugged in a lot of hotel supply, so working with partners like Taj and Obroy. And then with the, the Priceline agreement, it allowed us literally to plug in several hundred thousand hotels and let us take that platform at scale. If we'd, we'd done that on a smaller scale, it would have taken us a lot longer. Time to market was very quick. We work, we're doing a lot of testing, a heck of a lot of testing. The UI keeps changing, even to our surprise each day we, we look at the site. So it's early days, um, we're getting good, good signals out of it, uh, but it will continue to evolve. Um, and Expedia has a, has a firm position on it, and we'll, we'll see where that takes us. Before I get to that, uh, is payment a headache across different markets? Uh, India particularly, you also have the two-factor authentication. What, uh, yeah. what it is, the payment's actually fulfilled by the supplier. Right. So we're, for, for us, is we're basically, we jointly own the customer, we pass the customer information across to the supplier, and they complete the payment uh, within their jurisdiction and whatever requirements are, are, uh, are set up. Jonti, how long before we see you guys on instant booking? So I mean, from an Expedia perspective, you know, we look at, and we work very closely with the grant, um, excited about Meta 2.0. Um, it's a marketplace we've been playing in for a long time. Um, I think as we look back to as instant book sort of emerged, we look at every channel, just like probably many of our counterparts around, you know, the returns we'll get on that, that, that particular customer, the first transaction, the lifetime value of that customer, the repeat behavior, um, hopefully coming directly back to us, uh, a loyal customer. Um, I think now, with Instant Book having been in the market, it probably looks, you know, it's an interesting product and it's, it's looking, you know, there, there's been some great improvements, obviously, out of the testing, but at the moment, we're, we're sort of standing still on the side. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of noise about Instant Book, which is great, and, and, and various companies and organizations are, are, are trying it. But Meta is still a really important part of our business, and I think that's what people tend to get distracted a little bit by the noise and the new toy to play with. But 
that is a significant part of our business and, and it's, uh, it's, it's about acquiring traffic. Also, when people come to the site, they've very much got a different intent. So every user comes to the site with a different intent. Are they looking purely at a review? Uh, are they bouncing the, around the site looking at attractions? Are they looking at destination information? Um, we give them as many options as possible to connect with the supplier that they want uh, and engage with them. So of course, from an organization standpoint, instant, the, the, the reason behind instant booking was the consumer shift to mobile. And if you look at markets like India and China, with, with the ongoing discounting going on, how, how do you guys come to the top of mind for consumers, uh, in, in India especially? Mm. What, what's your strategy there to incentivize or increase uh, consumer downloads? We've, um, we've been very aggressive in building our download base. Um, I think when it comes to discounting, obviously, we, through our APIs, uh, connections to, to our partners, we, we pull the price through. It's up to them to actually give us the price that they see fit, so we, we don't have any active discounting in, in the pricing space. Uh, and we're, we've done really good with double-digit growth in our uh, downloads for, for mobile. And so, I mean, we've been now in the market in India for about four or five years. Um, I think the big one uh, for us now is we're, we're extremely focused on our, our technology and our product. And we know, and even some of the discussions that we just had at the end of the day, we firmly believe that thinking about the consumer and putting them first, uh, the examples uh, that she showed of just the quality of product and people getting what they want and how that, that bad experience can sort of replay back on us as, as intermediaries and not just the supplier. Um, we've got a huge technology uh, team just down the road, a kilometer away. Um, and the times that I'm, I'm spending here now and sitting, just hearing about the market, I know we've got some great ideas, but it is going to be very focused on, on making sure we've got the right product and looking at it from a longer, long term game. So, when you uh, consider some of the populous countries in the region, Indonesia, China, India, uh, while definitely there is traction online, uh, you see the players in almost all these markets are barely making profits. Mm -hmm. uh, is your strategy to wait it out a bit? Or is Our strategy remains to continue to test and learn. And so you'll see us in those markets. And certainly, uh, you'll see us move you know, over time, uh, you know, get more aggressive in some of those markets that, you know, as we work market by market. Um, and, and we're learning. It really comes back to our belief that you know, trying to compete in these what are becoming extre extremely crowded marketplaces for sourcing great traffic. Um, at the end of the day, you've got to have a great product that's going to convert properly. And so we're, we're really, really focused on that. Um, and more recently with our, with our organization in the joint venture, uh, as we lean even more closely with, with Expedia and leveraging their technology, uh, we're starting to, you know, have more focus in my, in my management team or senior leadership team and focusing in these different markets because we can leverage uh, what we think we bring to the, the table is leveraging the significant scale that we've now built on our platforms, um, but now having those local teams in, in place to allow us to you know, modify that. I, I look at myself as being very accountable to go back to Seattle on a regular basis and really educate and say this is what we need to be doing in terms of shaping that product. So from a product perspective, when the JV was launched, uh, to some extent it was defined by the packages which both mm -hmm. AirAsia and yeah. Expedia could curate. Is that still the case, or are you exploring more hotel bookings, more flight bookings by itself? Expedia is a brand. I mean, we see our success still comes. The value we bring to consumers is through that that value that that spread that broad offering of services, uh, and where we've had great traction and success in the market. I mean, Asians, uh, you know, the package, the concept of package, and this emerging. Uh, uh, generation of, of new travelers who are wanting to go get abroad, sometimes that, that packaging product uh, gives them that, that first step of confidence. We also look uh, at, at when we talk about flight and, and hotel, uh, and when everyone talks about data, having flight in the store is, we, we look at it almost as, as an acquisition channel now. And we, we, we have an upwards of around 8 billion uh, flight searches globally on our platform. Um, and putting the right analytics heads around that to, to you know, really work out how we, uh, we see that as, as one of our biggest competitive advantages. So you, you, we will make full advantage of our full suite of products in the store, and we think we've got a, a good edge on, on some of our monoline uh, competitors when it comes to that. Grant, uh, beyond hotels, uh, you've got wire tour activities. Uh, you've got a couple of restaurant booking reservation assets. 
Uh, what's the plan for that in Asia, and especially when you look at the activity space? Very, very fragmented. So we, we run the um, Via Tour business uh, out of Sydney uh, for, for Asia Pacific. We've just appointed actually some people to look at Asia Pacific and develop the strategy. Uh, Anita was appointed a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's fragmented. Um, we've been doing well on the sourcing of the content, but the, the where to next, that, that's still a work and play on the, the, um, the Via Tour front. And Demi with restaurants, um, that sits under the fork umbrella. Uh, we've had great pen penetration across uh, Europe. Uh, and the stepping stone for us was actually the, the Demi acquisition in Australia. Uh, and again, we're, we're working on the strategy for that for Asia Pacific. Just in Japan, we've actually done a, a, a deal with Genavi. It's like increase our restaurant uh, content and, and booking capabilities uh, specifically for that market. I think that gave us 700, several hundred thousand listings. So we're taking a different approach depending on the market. Uh, speaking of Japan, uh Another market where local players are extremely strong, uh, but, but both of the brands uh, have got some good traction outbound as well. Uh, how, why do you think that the local brands there haven't really expanded as aggressively in the region, uh, whereas some of the global brands have had relatively fair pan-Asia presence? I think as you, you look at the opportunity in Japan and you look at where those the sort of domestic to international travels are, um, traditionally, that domestic segment has been has been significant. Um, I think the, the the rate of product product development and the opportunity to open up a online service that that uh, offers Japanese consumers who who really are looking for trust and confidence in a delivered service. The offline players, I think, the, the JTBs of this world and others have really established that outbound view. But when it gets to online. I think that's where the product is, uh, you know, our superior technology and, uh, and product has is, is, is resonated. And there's no doubt, 10 years in the market, there's been an awful lot that we've had to do to, to tailor for that consumer. Now, Jane, can I just, I just want to jump in. There's a lot of back and forth around the dynamic between, you know, certain markets are tough, certain markets seem to be a little bit easier. I know in the case of Expedia Air Asia, and Expedia has made a couple of attempts, I think, to invest big in India. And then seems to have kind of pulled back. So there are some markets across Asia Pacific we see very strong presence from some of the big global o OTA brands or regional brands. In other cases, it's really local brands that have been very strong. Have you identified, are there certain common themes or patterns that you see across certain markets where you've been more successful and other markets where really getting into that market has been tougher? I, I think uh, what, what you and noting what you said as you've seen the uh, certainly over the last four years are, are um, different ways to go to market from a marketing perspective. You've seen this above the line at the Times. Uh, our approach now uh, of really leveraging, reaching out to consumers um, on, through the online space. Um, I think what we have seen probably more, as, as many would have known, Expedia bought back another 25 percent of the joint venture a year ago. And during the course of the last 12 months, there's been significant connections and, and partnership more with Expedia. And I think Expedia now spending about $800 million a year on technology. And so as I'm now sitting here talking more about product and technology, I think we realize in the last 12 months, in the India market, as well as in, as well as Indonesia, um, the importance of, the, you know, of what Paytm is bringing, uh, you know, e-wallet players, what we've talked about in China. Um, we're really starting to realize that that focus on the product and getting that right in the market is critical. Yeah. Putting money at the front end and, and, and bringing people to the traffic, traffic to the site uh, when you may not have that solution for you and your competitors do. A lot of our investment also um, uh, has gone into our supply team. And so cr making sure we've got that supply footprint. A lot of we talk about with the domestic markets and, and as Ashisha was talking about is solving for a domestic consumer and often that is in a domestic marketplace. And I think we have, have realized as an organization to be really successful there. It's about getting the right product on the, store, uh, on the shelf. It's about getting the right product on the site. Uh, and that's where a lot of our attention has been in the last 18 months. And as soon as we're ready to switch that on, uh, you'll be hearing very loudly from us. But, but to add to that, I mean, mm. uh, product is, is a commodity, right? Uh, how are you now standing up, up ahead or you know, how are you distinguishing yourself 
in, in consumer minds. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's the consumer side. Um, and so I think the <coughs> it's trying to be, innovate and, and come up with products that we think are, are not just there to serve um, you know, the transaction, but also just the, the shopping experience. So uh, unique products I think that we've built recently uh, on one side are, are scratch pad solutions. So everyone talks about cross device. And in some markets, it's, it's all on mobile shopping and transaction. But in others, it's uh, all about cross device. So the ability with our scratch pad product for a consumer who starts their shopping you know, on, on their phone, on the bus to work, um, continues on their desktop at work and then completes the transaction on tablet. This, this uh, Scratchpad product will ensure that you never have to go back and start again. So bringing that online. And I think the other thing that we're doing is, is uh, bringing that, that product not just to our consumers, as what we in many of us in the room would see <coughs> from a consumer angle, but doing that with our suppliers. So we've actually put just as much attention on those products. So a very recent product we launched was the uh, real-time feed feedback product, uh, people getting into their hotel and allowing the hotel to get feedback from the customer within five minutes of check-in. And the ability to turn what could have been a, a bad review uh, on, on TripAdvisor two weeks later, possibly into a, a much more positive experience. So I, we think there's enough in, the, in, in uh, the product space for us to really distinguish and uh, make ourselves unique. Ladies and gentlemen, Grant Colhoun and John T. Neen.